All right, in this video, I want to teach you how I cull my photo shoots. Now, culling is uh, a word that means basically narrowing down a, an entire photo shoot or event worth of photos, which could be in the hundreds easily, narrowing it down to the best of the best, which is basically the end result or the final product images that you're going to edit and then deliver as the finished product. So culling is a huge part of photography. It always has been, you know, the, the cutting room floor is basically where the photos go that aren't going to be picked. Um, even back in the film days, you know, they would take photos that didn't make the cut they, they weren't good enough. There was something wrong with them or whatever. Same thing with the digital age, just times 10, because we can take so many photos now it's ridiculous. So we need to narrow them down. And the way that you do that, um, is really important. So I use Lightroom obviously for a majority of my photography. And one of the things I love about Lightroom is its library function. Um, this is where I view my photo shoots, where I cull them, I select the best of the best, and I sort them out into different things. And when it comes to culling, there's no wrong or right way to do it, but there's better ways to do it. So if you have your own method of culling, I encourage you to watch this video, you know, compare it to your own method and say, hey, maybe Daniel's way is better or maybe my way is better. Um, if your way is better than mine, let me know. I would love to know how you do your culling because everyone's style is different and there's pros and cons to every different method. So the way that I cull my normal photo shoots, and now not weddings because that's different, but a portrait photo shoot or something where I'm delivering a select number of images, say they only pay me for 20 images or they only pay me for 35 images in the end, that's all they're going to get from me. I use the star rating system to find the best photos. And in the end, the five star images are the best, which I will edit and send to them. So when I first open a photo shoot, um, you know, I've, I've got every single picture I took in the entire photo shoot. This is a mother and daughter photo shoot. I have 200 and 220, 230 something images here. And I got those in just about an hour. <laughs> All right, so to set up your library to get ready to cull, if you look up here, this is a library filter. We've got text, attribute, metadata, and none. And then over here, we, we have different uh, different filters as well. So I'm gonna put it to attribute because I wanna filter my entire library into different attributes. Now, what attribute is that? They're, they have now appeared down here. So I can sort by flags. We've got flagged, unflagged, and rejected flag. We've got star ratings and colors. And then lastly, we've got the original photo file, the virtual copy of photo files, and video files. So when I cull, I turn on um, unflagged photos. So I don't use uh, flagging during a normal culling session. I will use flagging for certain things sometimes, but not for a normal portrait shoot. So I'm gonna, I only wanna view the unflagged. That means if I unflag something by hitting the, the X button on my keyboard, if I reject flag it, it's gonna disappear, which is what I want, because I wanna get rid of the, the bad ones that, are, that aren't even worth keeping. And next is a star rating filter, which we'll get to as we progress through the culling task. All right, so here's what I do with my hands. When I'm in culling mode, I've got my left thumb on the X on my keyboard and my left pointer finger on the number three. And then with my right hand, I've got my I've got two fingers, one on the right arrow and one on the left arrow. So I'm really just going through each photo of my photo shoot and I'm gonna mark it as three if it's a good one. Now I'm not gonna do five star, four star, even one or two star yet. I don't want to think that hard yet. I wanna kind of mindlessly go through my photos and just select the ones that are good enough to keep. Uh, even if they're not gonna be used ever in the future, I wanna keep the good ones and I wanna get rid of the bad ones. So if it's bad, I'm gonna hit X and that's gonna reject it which it will then dis disappear. Because remember up here on our filter thing, we've got only show unflagged photos, not show rejected. If you wanna show the rejected, watch this. Here we go, see they're gray? Those are the rejected ones and you can even see a little X flag on the top. That means I X'd it out. And literally I'm gonna delete those later because they're not good enough, they're, re they're duplicates. Something's wrong with them where I don't care to keep them ever in the future. Um, they're just going to take up space and I don't need them. So I'm uh, when I'm done calling, I will only show the rejected images, which are here, and I will delete them from my hard drive for good. But I'm not there yet. So I'm just going to show the unflagged photos. So like I said, I'm scanning through each one. I'm marking them as three if they're good and X if they're bad. Now, why do I start at three stars? 
Well, honestly, five stars is just too much. I found that it's just a little, it just makes my cooling process too long and too detailed. If I'm saying, is this a three star or a four star? Is this a one star or a two star? I don't know. I just have good, better, and best. Uh, so I do three, four, and five star only. I don't use one and two stars. If I could, I, I could maybe flag some photos for certain uses. Like I want this for, you know, a print ad. I maybe started with one flag. That way I could find it later. Um, or something special and unique like that, but I don't really have a use for one and two yet, so I use three, four, and five. Saves me some time, makes things simpler, which is what I like. All right, so I'm going through each photo. I'm gonna start them as three, you know, if they're good. Um, X them if they're bad. Now, once I go through my entire photo shoot and I mark the good ones, then I'm gonna get more specific in my filtering. All right, so you can set your filter bar to equal three stars. So it's only showing photos that are unflagged, and that are three stars. So here out of my 230 original photos, it's already narrowed it down to 36 photos. And that's good. That's not a lot of photos to go through. So I'll do what I did earlier is I'm gonna go through each one and I'm gonna say, this one's really good, make it a four star. No, that one's okay. That one's really good, make it a four star. So this is just an example. I've already culled this photo shoot. I'm already done with this one, but hopefully you can get the idea that I'm going through each photo and I'm upgrading them or I'm promoting it to the next star up. And as soon as I hit the number four button on my keyboard, it's gonna change this rating to four stars and it's gonna disappear because I'm only looking at three star photos. So it's been promoted to the next level up of a four star photo. So once I've gone through each and every photo of here and I've promoted the ones I like and left the ones that I don't care for at three stars, then I'm gonna go up one more level. Now I'm only viewing four star photos here. I've got this down to 10 and I'm gonna go through these. Then I'm gonna upgrade the ones that I really love that are the best of the best, make those five star. So now I'm gonna only view my five star photos. And again, I've already, I've already culled this photo shoot. So this looks a little different than what you'll see. But uh, yeah, these are my final images. And now I begin the editing process. Don't edit every photo of a photo shoot and don't deliver every single photo of a photo shoot. Those two tips I wish I had known five or more years ago <laughs> would have saved me so much time and it would have given me a better product in the end. Um, you know, it's not about quantity, which is the number, it's about quality, which is the value and the, the craftsmanship put into each and every photo. Um, so that's what you want to focus on if, if you do have the, the business model similar to mine where a client will pay me for a certain size photo shoot, which will include a certain number of edited photos and they don't get any more than that. If they want more, they can pay me for more, in which case I'll edit more. But if not, I've already done my work and I'm not overworking myself. So that's the basics of uh, how I call photos is again, I'm just going up three, four or five star. Um, I'm only viewing the unflagged ones. Now, once I've done all this, I'm gonna kick this to zero and say greater than, eight, greater than or equal to. Um, and I'm gonna change this to rejected flags. So next I'll go through, I'll, I'll select all of these X'd out images, which I don't like or that are bad. I'm gonna delete them. I'm gonna delete from disk because I don't need these. So the cool thing about this star rating system is that I have, in my opinion, my images can be sorted, you know, from best to worst. Um, so these are the final ones, which I will have edited and delivered. Now, if they want more images other than these, I can go down to four star and I can, you know, select one for them, or I can send them these as tiny little preview proofs for them to select from like, hey, these are the next best images that you didn't get. And they might be an alternate pose of a five star photo that they already have or it might be a better angle or just a totally different pose that I didn't think quite made the cut, but hey, that may be the one that they really love. And of course you can go down one more step, which should usually be the biggest group of photos, which is your three star or your okay photos. You know, we got okay, good, and best. I used to use um, flagging where basically I would just go through my whole photo shoot and I would, you know, I would positive flag or I would whatever, I would flag the photos as good uh, that I liked. And then I would go through that again, starting from the beginning. And I would kind of unflag ones that weren't as good. And then like a, a few more times until I really had like 
that certain number of best images flagged, which might have been 20 or whatever. But then, and that, that might actually be faster, but then it's just, it's kind of messy because you only have your best of the best images, but then what about the ones that are just below that? You basically have to go through your photo shoot again and find the equivalent to a four star photo. Here, I've already got them sorted for future needs. Another nice thing about the star rating system is you can go back and find the photos that you never published publicly and you can edit them for fun or you can use them as a teaching lesson or, you know, just to add something new to your portfolio or something to post in, in, a, in a slow time of your business. You can find something to do. Um, so, you know, a year later or maybe a week later, I might go back to a photo shoot and go to my four star photos and edit one of those because it's a good chance that, you know, these were not used anywhere else. So you kind of have something else to go back on if you're slow and you want to just post something. So uh, another tip for your library is to set up what details you're going to see on your cells or your image view. To do that, you're going to go to edit or control J. And so I've got it on compact cell view. You can do expanded cell, which adds a bunch of more stuff. You got file name, file type, pixel size, just details I don't really care for. So I keep it on compact. That also saves some space. All right, so here in the compact cell section right here, you've got different options. I've got the index number, which is that faint number behind the image. It just kind of tells you how many images you're at, which I like to have. Um, you've got your top label, which I have set to copy name or file base name, uh, which gives me you know what I've renamed a file as. And then the bottom label, which is rating and label. You've got a lot of options. You could show the ISO. You could show how many megapixels. You could do the, the capture time, if that's something that's important to you. You know, literally all your metadata in every image you could show in Lightroom somewhere. With your expanded cell, you have four options. You've got top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. A lot of options there if you really need to see what's going on. But I don't, so I keep it at compact. One more thing about Lightroom that makes it really great for sorting and organizing your entire photo library is keywords. Now, I do not use keywords but a lot of people do. Photojournalists, you know, location, travel photographers, keywords are key. <laughs> They're huge for certain types of photography, just not mine. Um, you've also got things like title, caption, um, all the stuff over here is literally your metadata. It says it right there. For every image is a little different. I've got all my time, my uh, camera settings are saved over here, all that stuff. So, you know, if I'm doing uh, a vacation photo shoot and I want to uh, if, if I'm doing, if I'm taking photos at a vacation or on a cruise, I'd like to probably remember, hey, what island was this photo taken at? Or what historical landmark was this taken at? I could go over here and I could add keywords. You even got GPS over here. Um, certain cameras have GPS now, and that's great. You can show this actually on a map view, and you can see all your photos on a GPS map, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, if you want to keyword stuff, you know, add things. Later, you can actually sort by text up here instead of looking at these attributes which i'm going to set this to nothing now it's not filtering by this it's not filtering by attribute at all now it's only filtering by text now what kind of text you've got different options i can sort by keyword so only images that have you know um castle in them would view or if i go to title only my images that i titled as you know ocean will show up you've got all kinds of really cool sorting and organizing tools that are great and that's just one of the things I love so much about Lightroom is its ability to cull, sort, and filter, you know, all of my images down to what I need. And honestly, I don't know how I did it before, but I'm so glad that Lightroom can do it now. So I hope this video was great for you guys. If you have any questions or if you have a better system of doing things, let me know. I love to read about how other people do things, uh, but I hope that you learned something from my method. And thank you guys for watching.